Hello, my name is Tina. I'm head of design of Victoria Designs and this video is the tutorial for the Alice in Wonderland Mega Project Pack. I will show you from scratch how to make the journal and the boxes and even a gift card. If you like to discover this Mega Project Pack in our shop, the link is below. And if you like to see first which printables are exactly in this Mega Project Pack, there's a link for that below as well. And now let's start crafting. Yeah. Let me show you what tools and materials you need for this project. So um, to start, two pieces of cardboard. This is one millimeter thick. That's a bit more than a sixteenth of an inch, I guess. And um, yeah, you don't need much. This is all. I already uh, cut it to size. The sizes will appear in the tutorial itself. You also need some strong tape for the spine. This is two inches wide. That's about five centimeters. Uh, that's important that it's wide enough. And uh, I'm not sure yet with which I'm going to use. This is a strong paper tape that you can paint over if you like. Uh, this is uh, um, plastic tape. Um, I'm not sure yet which one I'm going to use. Probably the black one. I wish I had more colors. And then we need some things to make sure everything we use sticks together. So I predominantly will use um, my double-sided tape. This is 3 8 one inch wide. That's about 9 millimeters. Um, about is good enough. Um, I'm also going to use probably a glue stick with this, just fast. And for the better glue work, I'm going to use uh, some tacky glue. And for one thing, to close an envelope, I'm going to use a temporary glue dot. Um, so you can open and close it again and again and again. Totally optional, this one. And I'm also going to use an ink blender and some ink to uh, ink the edges and make uh, parts of the craft stand out more, etc. Here and there I'm going to use some scissors and something that is optional but very handy. And oh, I love this one, even as dirty as it is, my bone folder. You know I also use this. That This is more optional than ever. You really don't need this, but it's just really handy to... Um, peel off the backing of double-sided tape. It goes so fast. Instead of only your scissors, you can also use a paper trimmer. Um, it is optional, but it's highly recommended. Um, I didn't bring mine here because it's over there and it weighs a ton, um, but it's so good. What you also need is a scoring tool, or in my case, I'm just going to use a scoring board um, to score the lines where you fold. If you use a scoring tool like this one, make sure you also have a ruler. Now, this is one of the things you need anyway, uh, but also a mat underneath. You also need two ribbons, each about uh, 11 inch. Uh, I'm not sure yet where I'm going to use these or these. Um, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see uh, what would fit best. You also need needle and thread to sew a few of the uh, signatures, not all. I usually use embroidery thread because I find it sturdy and simple and I can choose how many threads I use. This is a six strand thread, I think. And uh, I, totally optional, again, you can use a paper clip as well, or if you're very handy, you can use your fingers. This stops your thread from going through the hole. It just clips really hard. It's actually used for sewing instead of using pins. I also need something to set eyelets. I'm going to use one eighth of an inch eyelets. That's about three millimeter. And you have this eyelet setting kit. This part should work really well, the setting part. But the part that cuts the hole, um, this works with um, regular paper, light paper, but not with heavy paper. Normally you put this on top of paper, on top of a mat, obviously, and you just hammer it until the hole is uh, made. But I suggest to, uh, if you use this, to actually buy also a eight of an inch hole punch. This part should actually work fine. Just put uh, an eyelet in the hole and then put this thing on top on a mat, obviously, and they just hammer 
until this thing is set. I'm going to use my crocodile because it can punch holes through everything and it also sets it. It's very heavy duty, but I would just wanted to let you know there are also options that you can try out. You'll also need some elastic uh, for the notebook. Uh, a little bit is enough. I'm not sure if this is enough, but this is definitely more than enough. So a, a light, thin elastic, not too thick. This is only a, a millimeter, so 16th of an inch. Don't make it much heavier. Another optional thingy is a circle punch. This is a one inch circle punch and I'm going to use it to cut out notches out of the pockets in the file folders. And to end, it could be handy to have some binder clips to hold everything together while you're sewing your signatures. So we're going to start with a cover. And I cut two pieces of the one millimeter thick cardboard and the front and the back cover are going to be five and a half inch by four and one eighth. The measurements in centimeters should pop up here. So that it's going to be a really small book. And the spine has the same height. It's five and a half inch by one inch wide. I'm gonna put the spine aside for a bit and I'm going to cover the cover pieces first. And to cover these two cover pieces, I have some of the papers from the Mega Project Pack. I printed one of the papers instead of at full size. At a smaller size, I made sure the uh, height was six and a half inches. My printer can do that. You can just choose how high or how wide you want it. And um, I printed it smaller because I really want this whole rabbit hole um, on my front cover. And then I have some options for the back cover. And I thought I might want this. Um piece on the back cover yeah you can use things that you want pieces that you want but i think to have it really match i'm just going to cut out a piece of the large paper and see how it looks so then we have a small version on the front and a big version on the back like we're going deeper into the rabbit hole perhaps to have a good fit for your cover pieces cut out a piece that is six and a half high by five and an eighth and that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna cut these out. So I cut out my pieces and now I'm going to wrap these two covers. And I do this the same always. Let me show you one. So how I do it is really easy. I'm just going to put some double-sided tape all along the edges of one of the uh, cardboards. Really make sure you're at the edge so you have a clean, um, bond here between the paper and the cardboard this there i'm gonna put a bit of glue there later it's okay okay remove the backing And then put glue in the center. I'm gonna put a bit of glue at the edge as well. And with a glue stick, you can just be really quick this way. But I also want the edges to stick really well. That's why I use combination of these two. So, and then put them as much in the center as possible. Like this. Make sure it sticks and then take your scissors and cut at an angle the corners off. Don't just cut them off like this. I recommend to cut off more steep like this. So not straight, but a bit more angled. And then towards the corner and then turn your project. So this one has a steep angle as well. And make sure you have like a millimeter left here so the corner will be wrapped as well. Don't, um, don't have more than a millimeter here because it's going to be a mess. Do that with all four corners. So cut quite steep, leave a millimeter, turn, cut again. So that's it. And then I like to pre-fold my four tabs like this. Makes it easier. Open them up again. 
take your tape and put tape or glue, obviously, as close to the cardboard as possible. It's okay, you have a bit of paper left here. It depends on the width of your tape. Um, if you have a very small tape, you can cut it off. Uh, you can cut off the excess if you like. Or if you anticipate this, make the tabs a bit more smaller. I mean, make this whole thing a bit smaller. That's it. But you can measure for yourself with your tape. And if you use glue, you can obviously glue. Oh, I forgot one. <laughs> wow, I bet you guys saw it already and I didn't. Um, if you use glue, you can use glue all over, obviously. This. Okay, and make sure it sticks. Yeah, and then remove the backing. I'm going to start with the sides. So I'm going to remove one side backing and fold over really pull that you don't have any air gaps here. And then bone folder. Then the other side. There. And then the top and the bottom. There. Ready? And this is my back cover. And do the same with the front cover as well. So, and now we have our front cover and our back cover. And the book is going to open and close like this. Uh, this is important because now I'm going to attach the ribbons here. Let me check which one I'm going to use. So I'm probably going to use... Yeah, I'm going to use a black back. But if I use black ribbon, it will be a lot of black. I'm, I am, I'm going to use the, blue, the red ribbon, I am sure. Now, this ribbon actually came from a meal delivery that I ordered for New Year's Eve. It was wrapped very festive. And now I have meters of um, nice ribbon that I'm going to use today. Uh, I'm going to use about 11 inch. Yeah, 11 inch is enough for both. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm using fabric scissors here because I'm not going to waste my really good scissors. Be very careful. So open it like it should and then have your ribbons here. About here. Um, and for that, I'm going to mark the center of the height. And the height is five and a half, so that makes two and three quarters. This. And I'm simply going to use some double-sided tape here. Um, leave an eighth of an inch gap. Because this will be um, this will be open so again here as well. If you like it more sturdier, you can use two inch here. So I'm gonna remove the backing and I'm just gonna glue this on. Here as well. So check again if you put the ribbons on the right side. If you didn't, you can just still tear them off. So and now let's turn this into a little book cover. Okay, we have our spine here, and I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to put this aside for a bit. And I'm going to take a piece of tape that is a bit more than twice the height, just to be sure we can cut off the excess later. So I have once, twice, better too much, that not enough. Cut this off and then I'm carefully going to put this upside down and try not to stick myself to... Oh, wow, worked from the first time, yay. And then I'm going to take my um, spine piece. I'm gonna place it in the center. Make sure it's straight. Make sure it's straight, like straight, straight. There. Okay. Then I have this scrap piece of cardboard that's also a millimeter thick. 
I'm going to place it against this spine. This. Make sure it's not upside down. I'm going to put the back cover. I'm going to line the top and the bottom up. Yes, nicely done. Like this. And then we have a millimeter a small gap in between. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Of course, it doesn't matter with which cover side you start. Just make sure it's all straight. Yeah, it's in place. Make sure top and bottom are aligned. And then just, there we go. I'm gonna take my bone folder. And then I'm gonna start with the top. I'm going to wrap this over. Make sure there's, this is straight, so pull it a little bit, not too hard. That you don't have any air bubbles. Like this. And then I'm gonna use my bone folder like this. I'm gonna go in the gaps here. I'm gonna do the same with the bottom. Now I already see I have way too much. That's okay. I'm gonna cut off now. <laughs> Careful here because I have once in a tutorial cut off too much. So. Don't cut off too much. Don't let it slip away as well. Okay, perfect. No harm done. Um, stretch it a little bit as well. And go over. Okay. I didn't go super straight here. But no one's gonna notice that. <laughs> so, make sure it all fits. Go in these gaps here. Turn around, same here, go in the gaps, this way we have our little cover. I am not going to attach the inner covers yet, because the next thing we're going to do is prepare the hinge for the signatures and everything is going to come inside this little cute journal. And now let's prepare the hinge. Now I printed this on sturdy um, 160 grams paper. Although, if I might be honest, it feels more like 120. Just, I'm not really trusting this, uh, this weight. I printed it on the side that I don't want to show because my craft paper has two tones of brown and I want this tone to show and this tone to not show. So I printed it on the back and you see it has these lines and, and big circles and small dots, etc. It all has a purpose and it also has this little guide to uh, help you find the holes in the signatures. So uh, the first task is to cut these two out. I cut these two out and I'm going to put this aside for a bit. It's just to measure where the holes will be later. But this piece is very crucial. I am going to score now all these lines. And it is very important to score every line precisely. If you have a scoreboard in inches like I do, you should be able to precisely score all the lines if your printer prints at precisely 100%. That could be this case in the beginning, but I have learned that even the smallest tenth of a percent or hundredth of a percent will make already a difference. So make absolutely sure, it's very crucial, to shift your page if necessary a little bit to make sure the folds are exact and I mean exact see I'm shifting like almost nothing but I want it as precise as possible if you have a scoreboard in centimeters, you have to shift anyway. So they're actually pretty good. I have to shift yeah, here a little, 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 little bit. There we go. And now, 
How we're going to fold these is very important as well. Keep an eye if your folds are precisely where these lines are. How to do that? Take your piece with the two big dots towards you. Turn it around like this. And then we're going to make valley folds and mountain folds. A valley fold is when yeah, you create a valley and a mountain fold is when you create a little mountain. And we're going to have a rhythm here. Always two valley folds, one mountain. Two valleys, one mountain, two valleys, one mountain, etc. So I'm going to start with two valleys. So I'm going to fold this up. Check if it's straight. And I'm going to use my bone folder here to make nice clean crisp folds it's okay if to open it up again the next fold is again a valley fold remember two valleys one mountain check if it's okay open up again and the next one should be a mountain fold Yes, obviously when you turn it around, it's going to be a valley fold, but I mean on this side. So we have two valleys and a mountain. And again, two valleys and a mountain. Keep checking if the lines are correct, because sometimes you have the perfect scoring line, but you still, because it's kind of wide, the scoring line is still shift a little bit. So keep checking. Okay, so we have two valleys, one mountain, one valley, and now the second valley. And another mountain. And then again, two valleys. Oops, am I making... Oh, oh wrong side. Should be a valley. One mountain. And then there's two folds left there. Those are going to be two valley folds. Yeah, I already felt that this fold was not completely good. So I'm going to manipulate it to be a great fold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are parts in this craft that you can, well, it's okay enough. But this is one that should be really precise. So take your time for this. So, okay. Gonna pull it open again. I have two valleys, one mountain, two valleys, one mountain, two valleys, one mountain, two valleys. <laughs> and the paper is up. Oh yeah, what I forgot was I also want to ink these itches. I'm gonna quickly still do that now. Totally optional. And I'm not going to ink a lot, I'm just going to define the top and the bottom, you know. And the sides, I mean, I'm just going to define the edges. That's what I wanted to say. There. As I said, optional. And now I'm going to glue these three mountains together. And to do that, I'm going to turn it around again, spread it open a bit. And I'm going to use my tape here. Normally, my 3 8 of an inch tape will fit perfectly in between. If not, uh, you can use smaller tape, etc. Or if your tape is wider, no worries. Just make sure your tape doesn't come on the parts that have the dots. So these parts have three fine dots and this part has two big dots. So no tape on dots. Clear. So I'm going to put a piece of tape here. And I'm going to put it next to the fold so it doesn't touch the piece of the... Um, uh, the dots. Is this a problem if it does? No, not at all. Don't worry. Just a bit cleaner if we work this way. And it might come a bit over this um, this fold here, but that's okay. That's totally okay. So if you have a bit of wider tape, it can come over here because we're gluing it together anyway. So I'm gonna do put some tape here as well. So in between each pieces with the dots, there are two pieces without any marks. And just put tape on one of these pieces. That's actually it. So here and then there's another two pieces between the dots. I'm gonna put it here. 
So one piece is enough. Okay, let's make short sticks. And then remove the backing of one. And then just glue those two parts on top of each other. And this is crucial that this lines up perfectly or as perfect as possible. There we go. Even one millimeter off can, it won't be a disaster at all, but it would make it a bit harder in the next steps. That's why. Okay, gonna remove this backing and again, glue these two without dots on top of each other. Okay, that's great. And we're gonna do that with this one as well. And glue this. Okay, happy with that. That's close enough. So, and then turn around and also bend these three hinges to the other side. Give it a squeeze so that these move well. So the idea is on these three tabs, we will attach the file folders and on the, and the pieces here, here and here, we'll have these holes and there we can sew something in there and this way we could have a lot of things in the, actually a small part in your uh, journal and I'm already going to put some tape on front of these three hinges so make sure you decide now which is going to be the front because if you turn around these two with the big dots I mean will have um, an elastic to put a little notebook I want that in front. If you want it in the back, just simply turn it around like this. And But then the front of your um, hinges will be this side. And I want it like this, so the front of my hinges will be on this side. And I'm going to add some tape on all three of them. You can also put them on the back, but then this hinge will show. And I'd rather not show it on the front, you know. So... Put some tape here. If it doesn't fit here, I suggest to take a smaller tape. This because we cannot hide it anywhere else. Okay, this one as well. And this one as well. There we go. It's not time yet to use this, but I already, I'm already preparing this, you know? And another preparation that I'm going to make is already put some tape on the outer two tabs. These are wider, so I might later on put another piece uh, next to it, but only if I remove the backing here first. So, but this way it's already prepared. this and the last thing for the preparation is i'm going to punch these nine holes here so i have a mat here and i can use my needle as well but i'm going to use this little awl and i'm going to open this so i don't um accidentally punch this these these hinges so i'm gonna open it for the first one I'm going to punch these three holes already. Open the second one. Punch the holes. I'm going to open the third one. Punch the holes as well. So, and now I'm going to concentrate on the file folders. So I printed three pages with file folders there are more designs to choose from than these you can choose your own or mix and match as you like and i'm going to um, make sure that i have this one with the tabs on that side one in the middle and one on the other so you can actually um, flip through your journal and see the different tabs in the right order and there are two of the same on one side, and that's good because we need six. So six file folders, and on the back I printed uh, one of the more neutral large papers, just to make sure there's no white on the inside, because white in 
a very color book is especially when it's vintage like this it's quite stark and harsh so if you can soften that up uh, you can also print if you don't want to print this uh, completely other paper on the back or just a solid color on the back or or uh, an old vintage paper that you find online you can find thousands online um, these are all possibilities and i'm going to cut these six file folders out I cut these six file folders out with my trimmer as much as I can, but the rest, these white pieces, I'll have to do with my scissors. That's okay. You can, if you make a mistake, you can always ink the edges later to cover it up a bit. And then round these corners as well. And do that with all six as well. So these file folders have been cut out perfectly. I also immediately cut out three of the pockets and um, the cards that go in there. You can print more if you like, obviously. And they all have a nice back as well. And indeed, I've got to tell. So I showed you that I print one of the papers on the back of these, but I also did that with some of the cards as well. And now let me put this aside for a bit i'm going to score these folders in half and then they're actually ready so and then just score the center line okay and then simply fold them in half all six of them. And I'm actually going to quickly ink the edges just a little bit. So they already have some fake inking in the print itself, but I'm gonna add a bit more ink here to define the edges a little bit more. You can do this before the um, before the folding, by the way, it doesn't matter. You can do this also, yeah, no, that's not really necessary. So, a bit of an ink fest going on right now. Take especially care of these tabs here. I'm only using one color of ink here, and that's the brown vintage photo distress ink. But there are numerous colors to choose from, obviously. And I'm actually also going to tackle these cards and these pockets as well while I'm still holding my ink blender. Let's all do it at the same time. And here I'm just going to do the top and the bottom. Maybe later the folds as well gonna check that out yeah i make a lot of decisions while crafting like a lot of crafters do probably can't always plan everything okay i'm gonna take these three pockets actually there are six pockets you will see i'm gonna score them in half too these aside for a bit i'm gonna score these in half as well and um these tabs also so first Gonna do center and then these tabs again as straight as possible. So and now I have my pockets and what I'm gonna do as well is put a little notch in here. And for that, I'm going to take my ruler and find the center of each pocket. It's five and a eight. So that means two and a half and a sixteenth. It's okay to do this in pen as long as it's in a place that you will cut away with your hole punch later. And I'm gonna use a 
um, a one inch hole punch and I'm actually, let's see if this is possible and a good idea or not, to put all three of them on top of each. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it with two because I don't think my hole punch, just a, a light one, can actually hold it. So I'm going to do it like this. I always, yeah, there are a lot of things going on at the back of a punch, so I always, <laughs> always, <laughs> I always uh, line up with these two straight lines here, you see? With my eyes, I try to line them up here, and it's about half of an inch, uh, half of the circle, I mean. So I'm going to do just that. Line up the edge of the paper and make sure it's in the center. So the center is in between of those two lines here. You can always add more marks here if that would help you. Sometimes I do that. Take a marker like a Sharpie and just make marks where the center is, etc. Do the same here. Yeah, two heavy papers is all right. Three would have been too much. I already feel it. So I'm going to measure again. To be honest, if you have a lightweight punch, just take one piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'm going to fold them in half. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Already full. I'm going to fold them inside out. So I'm going to make a valley fold. And these I'm going to fold backwards. like this so it's going to be like this and they come inside these file folders so first i'm going to yeah i'm gonna ink these um notches as well and the sides pretty quickly do that with all three. Now I'm going to put these pockets into three of these file folders and I'm going to take three that have tabs in the different place and I'm going to add them here. So I'm going to show you with one. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape on the tabs on the white side. All four of them. Yeah, I'm going to make a corner quickly. It's a bit easier. And again, put the tape as close as possible against the fold, but not over the fold, obviously. Do that on all four tabs. With the angle, if you angle your tape like I do, you can switch between top, bottom, top, bottom. It will fit or turn your work around. That's possible as well. Okay, so let's make sure this sticks. Okay, and now to put this in, it's best not to put it in completely open because it's going to be hard to close them again. So I'm gonna first remove the tabs uh, the backings of the tabs on one side. I'm gonna make sure the center fold lines up, the sides line up like this, and I'm going to glue there. Remove the two backings. I'm actually going to yeah, I'm going to do it like this. Just keep it all down and just glue. There, that's the best way to do it. Because this is bulky. There's a lot of stuff going on. And the cards will fit in perfectly here. There. And do that with all three file folders and pockets. Okay, so my three file folders with the pockets are ready. So now it's time to define the order of the 
uh, signatures that I'm going to use. The three file folders with the pocket I am going to glue on the tabs like this on front, but I'm not going to do that yet. And the three others I'm going to sew in and I'm going to add the journal pages in here, in these. So these will hold the journal pages. Obviously, if you would like another order, please determine that before you start gluing pockets, etc, etc. The ones with the pockets can go to the side for a bit. And I'm going to concentrate on the journal pages. So I have all my journal pages right here. I have printed the tutorial size. And on the back side, I printed the same journal pages, but in another order and at 102%. These are 100%. And this way, if I cut out the front, the back will have more of a chance to be lined up. Obviously, a piece will fall off, but it's like the tiniest piece. So I also printed these on regular copy paper so 80 grams paper not to make them too thick and the first thing i'm going to do is to cut all these out i cut all the journal pages out i'm first going to just mix them all around you can determine the order completely at your own wishes but i'm just going to mix them a bit so there a bit everywhere. Okay, I'm going to make three piles of eight and I'm gonna make sure, for me, I like that, to have a really beautiful filled one at the outside. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. Ooh, that was almost correct. And let's see which one we could have on the outside. Okay, let's use this one. And let's try it out. I'm gonna Fold them in half, the whole pack at the same time. Oh, this is so cute, so tiny, but I love it. Yeah, that's good, good fold. Will this work? The only downside is that they will go past this because I'm using so much. Didn't think of that. So they are, they were meant to be a little bit smaller so they, do, so they would disappear behind this file folder. So, and let me show everything that needs to be done with one of these signatures and then the rest I will do off camera later. So first thing I'm going to do is put holes in these. Um, and for that, to keep it all together, I'm going to use finer clips. Definitely, if you don't want to use file folders here, you can just uh, only use these as well to sew in here. But I'm going to show it with the file folders. Make sure it is lined up straight. Gonna add some binder clips here. Just to be sure. Normally I, I do this without clips, but now there's a file folder and some pages involved. So, okay, now I have my mat here, my thingy. And then the last thing I need is this, because this will show you where to put your holes. Now the one thing is, um, it's a tiny little bit larger than this, just because this is a tiny bit larger than that, um, just make sure there's it's equally, there's just like a little bit coming out here. Just make sure it's in the middle. Okay. And then just punch three holes through everything. There. And I'm going to use some of my embroidery thread. Um, 12 inches should be enough. So that's 12 inch and I'm going to use three threads. So yeah, I need one more. You can use upholstery thread as well. That's really sturdy as well. So I only cut two because 
This strand has six threads. I'm only going to use three, so I'm going to separate them like this. Then I have two threads. I thought about using two, but that's a bit, that's just not enough. So, and um, the one left over, I just keep for another craft project like this. Okay, so I have three threads already. Only need one for this one. There, thread the needle. I'm gonna use this as well. To determine where they come, very important. Let me get all my file folder because I want them obviously, or maybe not obviously, to be um, tap here, 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 and then again, here, here, here. So, but where is this one going to go? That's very important because I want, I'm gonna have the one with the tap here on the first, I'm gonna glue this in with the pockets. Then is going to go one that has to be sewn without pockets. So that's going to be this one. Then we're going to take one with pockets with the tab on the bottom. That's going to be this one. And then we will have one with a tab on the top that will be sewn. So I'm going to use this one. Make sure this, it's, it's actually better to put them in the right order first. Um, so that will be this one, this one sewing, this one pockets, this one sewing, this one pockets, this one sewing, and then the order will be right. But I already fixed these to show you, so I'm going to put them, uh, sew them first. And this is going to be here. So if you want to change the order, please um, check it out first. Okay. So I know I want to sew this in the middle sewing row. I have my needle, thread. I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna go to the back first. I'm gonna go to the middle hole, through the middle hole of the hinge, and then through the middle hole I just made with the whole um, thingy here, the whole signature here. And then, yeah, this clip is because I'm sometimes a bit clumsy to leave a tail so I don't have to use other fingers that I don't have. Okay, then I go to one of the other on the side, through the whole um, signature and through the hole in the hinge as well. Like this. And when you're back out, you're gonna go all the way across to the other one on the other side. Gonna make my tail a little bit shorter because I'm not sure I'm gonna make it. Maybe 12 inches was a bit too short. Okay, so I'm gonna go across to the other one, back in, and back in through the signature as well. Yeah, it's gonna be close. It's gonna work, but maybe it's easier to have a little bit of a longer one. And then I'm gonna go back in. There. Then we have, I'm going to try to have one um, end on one side and one on the other side of this middle string. I'm just going to make a double knot or a triple knot, whatever you like. And this way, if you start in the back, you don't have a knot in the center of your signature. A uh, bit neater. This piece will disappear anyway. We're going to hide it. So I have three knots here. Yeah, I'm using fabric scissors for this and for the ribbons, etc. Okay. This one here, and now I am going to sew in this one with the uh, journal pages here. And so without the pockets as well. And the other one without the pockets is going to go on the other side in the first row as well. And then I will glue in very quickly the remaining ones with the pockets. Okay, so these can go. When you've sewn in all three uh, file folders with the signatures, just bend them to both sides to see if they really are bendy enough, you know. Um, this, with the help of your bone folder. There, and now it's very easy. We're going to stick the remaining file folders with the pockets to these tabs. First one, I'm gonna remove the 
backing. And very simple, I'm going to line this up. I'm gonna stick the back to the hinge right above the fold there. Then the next one, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Okay, so the next one, am I right or am I not right? And then the next one here is going to be um, this one. Always double check, please. There. Especially with gluing, because you can remove a thread and start sewing again, but this is harder when you've glued something. Okay. And then the last one is going to be this one. easier to put it right above the fold. There we go. Beautiful. And now we have a big chunky um, filling for our cover. And now the tabs work out as well. So we have one top, middle, bottom, top, middle, bottom. And um, we have pockets, journal pages, pockets, journal pages, pocket, journal pages. So yeah. And now let's see how we can attach this to the cover. But first, cut a lightweight piece of cardboard that is five and a quarter of an inch by one and an eighth of an inch. And by lightweight, I mean lightweight. This is from a box of some type of toast. And it's definitely a lot smaller, a lot finer than this one. It's yeah, the lighter the better. Uh, that's easier to work with, actually. And then roll a pencil inside to bend it a little. Let's see, I'm gonna use this one to bend it a little. If you have like a dowel or a rod that's a bit thicker than a pencil, that's even better because this is not easy. And try not to crease it. And that's happened with me already, but just try not to. Try to really bend it. Okay, so it's bent a little bit. And then check if this piece of cardboard is as wide as the hinge from this fold to that fold. So without the tabs on the outside. And if it's a bit wider, trim it a bit. And as far as I can see, it's actually all right, but you never know with the folding, etc. It's, it's extremely hard to get it right. Okay, this is actually pretty good. So I don't need to trim this one. If in doubt, trim it. <laughs> and then quickly ink the bottom part, because this is visible. Ink the bottom part and the top part of the cardboard and also a bit on the inside. Maybe you can see inside the hinge by, by accident. And this will make sure you don't, how can I say it? You don't break the illusion, you know, because our Alice in Wonderland, it's all illusion and we want to keep it that way. And then put double-sided tape all over this back and then we're going to glue it to this hinge do this spine thingy. So normally this should fit precisely three of the three eighths of an inch tapes. Let's see. If not, just, just cover it. <laughs> oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm going really crooked here. Yeah, I'm gonna... Make sure this sticks and remove these two. Please do it straighter than I'm doing right now. And then I'm going to put the last one on top. There, make sure this is double-sided tape that sticks very well. Um, this is a cheap brand. I don't know the brand, it's fairly local, I think. But it sticks well. Another one that sticks very well too is score tape. Okay, I removed all the backings and now I am going to glue it on the back. Oh, first, 
forgot to do one thing and that is I'm going to punch these holes because on the to on the front you won't see them anymore so I'm gonna just poke slightly in the um, through it just to know where it is just to know the placement for later it's too small but otherwise we're not going to see this anymore so and then carefully position this in place make sure it's straight make sure all the um, pieces of um, cord are covered yeah. okay and then just really make sure it sticks And then I'm going to attach the uh, eyelets. Now, it's going to be a bit tricky because all this is in the place and we can't do it sooner. Um, but I'm going to cut an eighth of an inch hole where I put my mark earlier through the cardboard, through the paper. Like this. And then I'm going to set my eyelets. I have purple ones here because that, yeah, that's what I had. This. Put them in the hole and then my settings are right. Yeah, for eight of an inch eyelets, it's C3, I guess. And then I'm going to aim. Keep this in mind for if you make this yourself, I would now, because it's a bit tricky, um, only glue this front file folder with the pockets in afterwards. This will make it a lot easier to do. Yep. So then I'm going to take a very small elastic. I think this is a leftover one and it's going to be like probably just long enough for me. So I think mine is nine and a half inch and I think it is really going to be tricky. So I'm going to thread the ends through the front and on the back I'm going to make a knot. But I want a slight tension here so um, yeah, make a double knot here. And it should have a slight tension and I think I'm going to barely have enough. But I'm going to manage, I'm going to be able to make a knot here. Yep. Okay. Tight knot. Let's check the tension. Yep, that's perfect. And now it's time to put this in here. And for that, see, you will have an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom left. Oh, I see now that my should have seen it earlier. I see now that my piece of cardboard is a little bit longer. Just gonna trim it. And the other thing I'm gonna do is quickly um, ink it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove these backings here. Put it in here in the right order. <laughs> sure. Oops. Yeah, that was going to go wrong. Uh, make sure the front is the front and the back is the back. So I'm going to put this here. And I'm actually going to perhaps add a little bit of glue as well. But make sure first that this is bended. Because this center is one inch and this is one and an eighth. So it's going to be a hollow back here. And then it will fit in here. So um, try to measure up these folds with these folds. Okay. Let's remove this backing. There. I'm going to add a little bit of glue as well. Just as a backup. Right. 
next to the tape here. Just as an extra backup. No. Okay, and then this is the front. This is the front. Check, check, check. I'm going to line up this fold with that fold and keep an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom. Okay. Give it some time. Try not to move it yet. Okay. If you want to be sure, you can add some little clips here just to make sure it doesn't move. But it's probably already stuck to it. So, and then I'm going to remove this backing as well. This, yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit of extra glue here as well, just a little bit, and again here. In this crease as well and line up the folds again here bit tricky hold it in place make sure it'll bond give it some extra clips if necessary just to keep it in place and then when you close the book, you see the spine will be hollow this way. So now I'm going to close this book and put a little bit of pressure on here with a heavy book, just for a moment. Trusty Lord of the Rings helps me out every time. So this all has been dried and it's really sturdy now. And yeah, you can put everything completely flat, especially in the middle and the sides. Yeah, it's, it's good. You can put it flat, but it's good to put another book under here if you really want to do flat stuff. If you look from the top, we have this hollow spine here, which I like very much. And now let's finish this. And I cut two pieces out of one of the papers with this pattern that I'm going to use for the inside covers. And they measure five and quarters by three, seven, eight inch. And before I'm going to apply them, I'm going to ink the edges a little bit just to have it all stand out a bit more. Just a little bit. I Maybe I should use black instead of brown, but well, in this case, I think it all works kind of pretty well. And I am not using a ton of ink. I'm just using a little bit. And to apply these, I am simply going to add some double-sided tape on the edge, some glue stick in the center and yeah, glue it. And then make sure you have about eighth of an inch all around left. Okay. Finished. And then here, back as well. And now we have a beautifully finished little journal thingy with pockets and file folders and tabs here. But we don't have this elastic here for nothing. So I'm going to quickly make a little notebook to put under here as well. And for that, I have these three pages. Um, these are pages F96 and F97. And this is F97 again. Um, 
96 with the cover I printed on sturdier paper so this is 160 and um, the others I printed on 80 grams paper so the normal stuff and on the back of all three I printed yeah this is wrong but I already corrected it in your files this is 98 and you will see that these um, sheets are larger and that is so if you print them uh, the larger ones on the back and you cut out the fronts you won't have any white edges so uh, that's why I did that so I'm gonna cut these out quickly okay I cut these all out and now they look the same on all sides obviously we have one more sturdy page as well uh, because it was on the same paper as the um, cover or you leave it off and use it somewhere else in the journal or you just leave it in I'm just gonna leave it in so I'm going to make a little pile make sure the cover is on the outside and simply fold it in half and it's ready yeah that's how quick it is so pull in half you can use staples if you like um, that's definitely possible uh, you can ink edges you can add things or not I'm just gonna leave it like this and then you can simply slide this underneath and you have an extra notebook in here that you can pull out as well and that my friends is a very very nice Alice in Wonderland journal and then there are also three boxes to make all three boxes have the same width it can fit a file folder perfectly but the depth is different and I'm going to make the largest one I'm gonna show you later on why I'm doing that but first let me show you the printables so I have um, the base here and I printed this on the back and um, I have this this also is part of the base these are the sides but obviously it doesn't fit on one page so it fits on a separate page and then we have some panels to decorate it this has a back as well this doesn't need the back at all okay I printed this all on sturdy paper and the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut everything out <laughs> So I cut out all the components of this box and I chose the blue label. Now the label and the panels can go for a while. We're gonna first make the, fir the base of the box. These are the sides. And first I'm going to score these four lines. So There, and then fold in everything. And also all the tabs. Like this. There. And now back to the front and put tape on all these six tabs as close to the fold as possible now these tabs are actually huge they are a lot larger than my tape and this time i might actually cut off the excess because it's a bit too much take care don't put the tape on the fold but put it right next to the fold That's okay. Okay, make sure this tape sticks. And now I'm actually going to cut off the excess or most of the excess because it's really too much now. Is it a problem? No, but it's going to be there for nothing actually. Okay. 
And now I'm going to remove these two tabs and apply these uh, side pieces. Now make sure that the long side is on this long side and the short side is on this short side. Otherwise you're going to have a really weird box. So, oh, oops, almost went wrong. And glue right next to the fold like this. Going to do exactly the same on the other side. So again, long side will be glued here, short side will be glued here. Be sure to glue it the right way. There. And then remove one by one the backings of the other uh, tapes and glue the box together. So now I can glue this part. Now I can glue this part here. The same with the front. And the last piece right here. And now we have a large box. And obviously to finish this off, I'm going to go in with my uh, ink. If it were only to disguise these white edges, you can do the corners lightly as well if you like. That's all up to you and your creativity. So and now I want to add my panels. So you can use tape for this, but I'm just going to use um, glue stick. It's the easiest and the fastest. So there's a panel for each side and an extra label to put on the front panel as well, if you like. So let's start with you. There. And it will fit right on the other side and it will have an eighth of an inch border all around. Let's see if I can show it like this for you guys. Yep. Oh, I should have, should have inked the edges. Oh, maybe I can still do it because it's glue. I'm going to try. I'm so going to try. Yeah, that one's done. Top one, should have inked the edges. How can I forget that? I should have this thing dangle in front of me the whole time. <laughs> then I would still forget it, perhaps. Okay, this one's done. That's the beauty of using glue stick instead of tape. If I would have used tape, I would have, would have been too late. So this side's done, and now just the bottom side. Yeah, it seems like I'm completely wrecking this, but I'm not. It's going to look fine. Okay. And now I'm going to glue these down again. And no one will notice. I forgot, except all of you guys, obviously. So, so let's first <laughs> quickly do these. They have a bit of fake... Um, ink on the edges already, but I like to highlight it a bit more. This way you can use the colors that you like and the amount that you like for yourself. And quickly the label as well. It gives it a more vintagey, grungy look, you know, and you can hide all imperfections. So, now I'm prepared. Let's do the back panel. Thank you. 
There we go. And to end, I'm gonna glue this label on. In center. There. And if you have a bunch of file folders like these, you can just pop them in a box. This one's fairly large, obviously. And you can sort your ephemera in here or stickers or other small things or even small cards. The beauty about this wide one is that it can also hold four of these next to each other. Let me show you. I have this journal that I made for the Ephemera File Folders Mega Project Pack and it's the same size because the whole Mega Project Pack is actually the same projects but with other, um, with other designs and you can definitely fit four of these in here. But let me quickly show you how you can use the contents of this Mega Project Pack to also make gift cards like this, this birthday card. So um, I used one of the file folders, I folded in half, I also had printed something on the back. Everything is printed on sturdy paper by the way. Yeah, I printed this door on top and then the number seven if it's a birthday card for example and then on the inside uh, there's a little pocket that you can put some money behind and I had the opening to the center so it wouldn't fall out. And then I have this postcard on the back. On top of that is a mirror that I cut out of the embellishment pages and a clock. The clock uh, goes backwards, by the way, if you take a look at it, because it's Wonderland. On the front as well, I added these pips. And here in the label holder, you can, for example, write the name for who the card is for. And of course, a gift card you'd like to put in an envelope. So there are two envelopes in this kit as well. I used this one. And uh, I printed one of the papers on the back to resemble this um, inside of the card. But there's actually a back design for the envelopes, especially for that as well, if you like to use that one. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut this out. Obviously, it is um, print on sturdy paper as well. Actually, most of the things I use for this pack are print on sturdy paper. The only thing that is not sturdy paper is the journal pages and the some pages of the little notebook in the journal. That's all. So yeah, most of this envelope you have to cut by hand. So I cut this one out and I think I did a fairly good job. Now first, before I'm going to ink the edges, by the way, if uh, these are a bit too hard to cut out, these details, and it didn't go so well, ink the edges. Gone. Gone are the mistakes. But first I'm going to score the lines. So these four. And then I'm going to fold all the parts and use my bone folder to make crisp folds. There, and then you can, uh, if you like, ink the edges and also the folds. I'm just gonna do a really light one. I'm not even going to use ink. There's enough ink, I think, on the on my blender. So yeah, really, really light. I don't want to take to oh, take away too much from the design because it's really beautiful. I don't think these flaps need to be done, but let's see. Okay, and then going to put some tape here, but make sure because if you close it... No, I'm going to use some glue because 
not the whole tab um, needs to have glue here. Very important. So what I'm going to do is make a light mark under here. So you won't see it up to where my glue should go. And then I know. Here the same. So I will start here. And I will go here. So this piece should be glued. And so I'm not going to use tape because it's a bit weird. Or you could use a re really small tape here. Definitely like a quarter of an inch, half centimeter here as well. Okay, and then I'm going to close it and you have a really beautiful envelope that will fit this card and more and more. I like envelopes to be rather too spacious than not spacious enough. And now to close, this is the kind of envelope that you want to close and open over and over again. So what I have is this. These are like little squares, if you can see it. And they are temporarily adhesive, so you can open and close them all the time. So I'm going to try to put, yeah, you can't choose. There are like, they are on this tape here. So I'm going to put, I don't know, two or so on here. Yeah, there are two on here. And now I can close it and open it and close it and open it. And it's temporary. Make sure you don't buy the... Uh, permanent one. I would rather have these temporary ones as actual individual dots. That would be even better, but I didn't find them yet. I'm sure they exist. So there, gift card in very beautiful envelope. Thank you for watching the tutorial. If you want to craft this whole project by yourself, don't hesitate, there's a link below to purchase this mega project pack. Or of course, if you like to see first what is exactly in this pack, there's a video link for that as well, as I've said before. And now I wish you a truly beautiful day. Mm -hmm.